We use stone coat countertop epoxy to create severed marble. In this video, we show you step by step exactly how a do it yourselfer can create this advanced look with simple techniques. Watch right now how we use our color additives to create this technique. Using reactions from one another, you create depth and realism. The techniques are simple, and using household spray paint combined with our additives creates unbelievable looks. We show you how we chop the surface and torch the bubbles out. We remove the tape in between coats so we can do our next color. By doing two color coats, it allowed us to create contrast. We taped one part off and we poured the second. This technique proved to be amazing. We were happy that we did it and we're excited to show you how. You'll learn how to mimic marble and create high-end opal. We're gonna show you how we combine these two techniques and added clear veins. We're gonna show you how we torch the veins to create movement along with a heat gun. We're gonna show you the timing that we use to meld everything together and more. This video is jam-packed full of pro tips for the do-it-yourself for the weekend warrior and the contractor artisan. This video is part of our epoxy skills series. Visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. All right, we're gonna create organic shapes with tape to create a dam. This is a first. We're gonna see how well it really works and then peeling that tape at the right time is critical. You don't want it to embed under that epoxy, but you wanna be able to get it off soon enough before it locks it in. So that's a guessing game. It's kind of fun to, 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 to gamble. We're gambling. We're gambling. We're not in Vegas, but we're gambling. There you go. All right. Hopefully we roll a seven or 11, right? Speaking of Vegas, April 7th and 8th, 2020 is the Artisan Summit. Number two, it's going to be epic. We'll see you in 2020 in Las Vegas. All right, we're going to use regular painter's masking tape to tape off organic shapes. Why? We want some really cool, hard visual interest that has this exotic stone look that seems as if it doesn't belong together. I've installed granite that looked like that. It was always the highest in and it always seemed to look the most classy. So we're gonna create these shapes using tape. We gotta peel them at the right time. Your drips tell you everything. If they're nice and gummy and they're not moving too much, that's the time to remove the tape. There's our piece, man. What's our goal for this project? You can see that we've taped off these reservoirs. These are gonna be our popping pieces to this project. We're gonna use blues. We're gonna use an array of blues out of spray paint. We're gonna do Lagoon. We're gonna do Seaside. We're gonna do Spa Blue. We're gonna do Cobalt Blue Metallic. And then we're gonna switch to a silver. And then always, of course, black and white. Another couple of additives we're gonna use are metallics in Violet Pearl and Crater Lake Blue. Those are gonna react with our base tint to create cells 
Our spray paints are also gonna react with both of those additives to create natural reactions. We're gonna use our stone coat countertop epoxy at a one to one ratio. We're gonna mix it for two minutes using a drill. We'll pour that out and we'll start that creative process. We have our palette and now the sky's the limit. Don't be afraid to move color. Don't be afraid to work this material until you're happy. You have plenty of working time. This product is designed just for this purpose. Zero VOC, eco-friendly, it's do-it-yourself friendly, it's designed for the weekend warrior. Let's get started. So you guys are gonna mix our additives there. I'm gonna add black base tint into the rest of our epoxy here and we'll meet in the middle. All right. I'm gonna pour this out in that centerpiece and we'll trial it out. So you can see what we're doing here with our old bucket is we're gonna set it at the end of the countertop so anything that drains will go into that bucket. I'm gonna go through and just trial this one more time so I don't leave too much on the surface. I don't wanna waste anything. Okay, Rhonda, are you ready to help me? You bet. So go ahead and let's just pour that randomly, not in light, but almost just no pattern, right? You, just, you want bigger chunks or? No, I don't know, let's start small because we could always add more. So I'll, I'll lead kind of with this color to show you. So I'm just, Yep. you concur? Yep, I concur. And I'm just gonna start spraying a lot of spray paint in this and we'll, then we'll move it all around as one, okay? And then I wanna be careful not to overspray onto the other piece. You want the white? I think this will work. Yep. That's the blue, nice. Then I'm gonna give you the silver. All I'm gonna do here is just try to move these colors around enough to mix them without melting them too much. Wow. This almost looks like a peacock. Yeah. I'm just, just kind of chopping it with a rag and just moving it enough to hide any floating spray paint. That's too easy right there. Look at how, look at how it makes it look instantly more real. Right. This came out fantastic. I can't wait to finish this piece. I'm gonna come back in a few hours. We'll peel this tape. We'll let it just flow out a little bit more. It's, it's not gonna be totally solidified. So when I peel it, we'll see what happens. Then I'm gonna come back tomorrow. I'm gonna pour the next opposing color. Typically we do color coat all the same time. But we're testing something out. I really wanted opposing colors, something that's gonna grab your attention but work well as an exotic stone. It's easy to mimic mother nature when you experiment beyond your comfort zone. We'll see you in a minute. Step one, I'm gonna protect what I did as the first section in the first pour. I'm gonna use the masking tape to mask off these inlays and then we'll start with our next color. I think I'm gonna go just outside the detail so that when I remove this, it will flow inside that little like sharp detail that I put in with the stick. Guys, we hope these videos really generate some thoughts and ideas and creativity for you. If you're finding value in this video, don't hesitate to hit that like button and help us get higher in the queue. Sweet. I think we're ready. Let's do this. I'm gonna mix up some stone coat countertop epoxy and clear. I'm gonna use some spray paint. I'm gonna use white. I'm gonna use silver. I'm gonna use black. And I think I might use a little bit of cobalt blue just to tie this section in with this section so it doesn't look too foreign to each other. And then I'm also gonna use our black base tint. I'm gonna use our white metallic and I'm gonna use our diamond dusk. I'm gonna do a lot of clear and then I'm gonna use those additives to bring in veins. I'm gonna do striated veins and movement in this and make this marble hit up with this glorified awesome granite and it's gonna be a work of art masterpiece, I hope. Let's get started, here we go. It's interesting, when you work with epoxy, the kind of garbage that you create, it's a lot of fun, you're like, the gloves are off. <laughs> you, can have, you can have a gentleman's fight at range. Yes, stop it. <laughs> gentleman's fight, that's an oxymoron, man.
What I really love about stone coat countertops is if you love this color now, but maybe five years later, you're kind of over it and you're sick of it. You don't have to throw this out. You get to renew it. You could actually recoat this in a weekend and have a totally new look to match your new taste and your new decor. Whatever home and garden television or HGTV told you that week, you can throw it on your counters and see what you think. That's why I got into construction. I failed the circus. Multitasking. I'm getting rid of all my epoxy that's left over in the bottles to create a sample. If you do this a lot, you're gonna get some that have just little bits in the bottle and it's not worth sitting there waiting, but you'll come to that one pour where you're, you know what? I'm gonna use all my leftovers and, and you get this beautiful project out of a bunch of leftovers, but just be careful to use all part B's and all part A's. Don't mix them up accidentally and get the mixture uh, ratios off. This bottle was sitting in my shop for a long time, well over a year. Let's try it out. On purpose, we've left products sitting on our shelf to see the real shelf life. The lab says one year, that's a really conservative guesstimate. You can use this stuff for a very long time. It has a great shelf life because there's zero VOCs. There's no solvents that are evaporating out of your product and causing solids to settle to the bottom. So you get a great long shelf life with Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. Also that zero VOC makes it eco-friendly and DIY friendly. There's no noxious fumes while you're working with the epoxy. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more white. Here we go guys. Let's see what this thing turns into. Remember, some of these colors are opaque, like this black and the white, you won't see through down to that base. But through the diamond dust embedded in that clear, you will see through it. And the clear that I'm about to pour, you'll see through. I'm gonna add a little bit of spray paint here and there to make all those things react to one another, and I'm gonna get a beautiful piece. But I've just laid down in rows pretty straight what my colors are, I'll add the clear, and then I'll start moving them around as I wish. All right guys, we are in the middle of a really cool pour right now. I can't wait to see what this is gonna look like when I'm all done, this is awesome. We got black, we got metallic white, we got diamond dust and clear, we got some silver, we got some black and white spray paint. It's all gonna react and come together. We got a beautiful base and some inlays already poured. This is gonna be fantastic. Let us know, do you like what you see so far and do you wanna see the finished product? And I got these whites mixed slightly different. One of them I got heavily concentrated with metallics and one of them is just lightly concentrated. So that should be a fun difference as well. You could play with that to get really cool, unique colors happening. We get asked all the time in our YouTube comments, how do I repeat this process? What's the recipe and what are the steps? We've done that work for you. We've created a step-by-step -step pictures and words to put this process together with ease. Check out stonecoatcountertops.com under our project recipes and you're gonna learn step-by-step -step how to recreate this project like a pro. We'll see you there. I've got an old Bondo squeegee. I'm gonna move these colors around with this just to kind of spread it out and then I'll maybe meld it a little further with a paint stick or my hands. This is really cool. And I'm just moving it around enough to coat the piece. And the more that I move it, it actually looks better. That was really easy, just moving that around with the uh, Bondo spreader, you can see some of these reactions that are already happening. This is complex right here. I'm gonna mix some white into this jet black just to give it a little bit more interest here. Just go through here and I'm gonna get it saturated wherever there's any epoxy that's missing. I'll just saturate it with my hand and then I could come back with this paint stick and move it around too. This is gorgeous. This is going to be a showpiece. I think I'll come back with that Bondo spreader too because I like that it's creating kind of fatter lines. It's not just creating these thin lines that you get with the paint stick. This is just cool to do where you want more color. This is that silver metallic spray paint and it's subtle but neat. You'll think you're messing your color up but it'll continue to separate and move for you. And I think I'll just start drizzling some of this in like little veins now. Get some veins with our diamond dust too. And I'm almost just skip troweling this a little bit just to make some fatter lines, more melded out. It'll make it look more like marble. Let's get a little bit of blue. Guys, what do you think? Would you add blue to tie this in? A little goes a long way when you got a strong color like this. So let's just start kind of in the darker section where that black is, and then maybe just peek it through a little bit here in this lighter, oh yeah. 
Yep, it's definitely going to bring some beauty to this. I just have a little bit left here on my stick. And just by dragging it through like that, you can see traces of it popping up. Oh, wow. It's a little more than I wanted, but I think it's going to really be cool. Usually some of the coolest things are found in the process of pushing the limits. Look at these reactions right here. I don't want to mess with that. So I need to start brushing out these edges a little bit. I'm going to get some of this color here on my hand and just start rubbing some of that in the edges. See this right here where that black is? Just use that. And that's gold right there. You could just pick that up and use it. Now that I've gotten these edges with some epoxy, they'll flow over. They'll kind of draw that color over that edge. All right, I'm going to go through here and move some of this color here. I'm just using some of that trash here on the table. Veins, just more layers on top before I move it around. See this here where it kind of looks man-made, this little tadpole? I'm going to just use my paint stick, just spread that out a little bit so it looks more realistic. It's not hard to do this, guys. It's just step back and you have plenty of working time to know when you want to stop and when you don't. So what I'm going to do now is just move this around with the torch and heat gun a little bit just to create a little bit less straight effects. All I'm doing is just rolling color over other color just to create windows and openings and I, I think that'll be more visually interesting. Pro tip guys, when you're using different additives, it's less likely you're going to create mud with your art because they continually want to separate and give you that high contrast. So it's okay to move them together and watch them come apart once again. Yeah, what I'm doing here is I'm just really erasing any man-made strokes. It's creating true randomness. I think I'll come back a little late in the pour and just add some color to these edges. They're, they're a little bit bald. And you could take some color and start adding it to it and it'll look more, more real. I could also come through and add just a coat on those edges if I'd, if I'd like to build those edges up so that I could sand and polish them. All right, Chris says add a vein. We're gonna add a vein. We don't know when to quit, Chris. Okay, I'll just take some black and silver through that and maybe just a touch of blue. Just a touch. All right, let's torch that out. I think I'll uh, move that slightly with the stick just on some of these spots where it's a little too bright. Push that paint down. There we go. Good call, Chris. I think I'm gonna add more. I'm gonna move it around just a little bit with the heat gun just to blow it out slightly without cooking it. I think I'm gonna lay a, a bead of clear down and then make a vein in that too, right here in the front. That looks good. That needed that right there in the front, just off kilter slightly. Awesome. So all I think I'm gonna do here is just use my hands and just work up to this vein, fill in any dry spots from that tape. I take my heat gun and blow that color over. All right, guys, we pushed the limits. We've been at this thing for over an hour and a half. It's pretty warm in here. It's actually 78 degrees. It's doing great. I had plenty of time to do all the effects my heart wanted. I had fun doing this piece. You can't get this hard line by doing this at the same time. So this is really our biggest takeaway here is if you pour two different color coats, you get a fantastic approach to a very interesting piece. It looks like this rock was torn open and showed you this opal on steroids. This is a really cool piece. I can't wait to do the clear coat. Let's come back tomorrow and finish this thing up. We'll see you in a moment. All right, we are back and this is dry. We're ready for the clear coat. It's simple. We're going to sand with 220 grit, then we'll wipe the dust. We're going to mix our stone coat countertop epoxy at a one to one ratio. We'll trowel that out using a one eighth by one eighth square notch trowel. We'll chop that. We'll torch it three times and we're ready to let this set up and install our showpiece. I'm so excited. Let's get started. Pro tip, if you want to do one clear coat and make sure everything lays out nice and flat, be sure to get your seam a good smooth transition so you don't see where that step ripples down. The clear coat will build up and level, but it can only do it so much. So if you're highly out of level with your inlay, then you need to sand that flush so that you get a really smooth layout. As you can see, we've scuffed and scratched the surface pretty heavily. Don't worry, the epoxy is going to hide everything. Any of your scratching blemishes and your sand 
sanding imperfections are going to be hidden with that second clear coat. How do you get a really great finish? Here's some pro tips. Mitigate the air movement, turn off the AC, close the doors and close the windows. Those are great tips to get a really flawless finish. Also, turn off the lights so the bugs don't get attracted to their own reflection. That's a good pro tip as well. And if you're in the summertime, it's okay that it's warm. Keep it nice and warm. But if you got a dehumidifier and you're in the deep south or you're in Florida, you might want to use that dehumidifier. That would help too. Keep in mind, epoxy will set up nice and gradual. You got plenty of working time. But with this second clear coat, I'm gonna trial it, I'm gonna chop it, and I'm gonna torch those air bubbles out, and then I'm gonna leave it alone. You could come back and visit it, look for your imperfections, and pick out any little dust nib or anything like that that you may see, or you could sand and polish your surface. If you wanna learn more about sanding and polishing, check out the video in the link below. All right, guys, let's get going. You can see that I poured everything out in the center here. The reason I do that is because I'm gonna mix it again using my trowel. I don't wanna put uh, little swirlies of epoxy everywhere, so I mix it in the bucket with the drill, I mix it on the surface with the trowel, and then I mix it one final time while chopping. The Stone Coat Countertop Triple Mix Strategy, let's go. All right, so I poured all the excess, I scraped the bucket right here, so I really wanna get in here and mix that out. Boy, look at how clear that is, man. That is just gonna be so pretty. It really looks right once you do a clear coat. It kinda blends the two together. Okay, I got this side poured. I'm gonna chop it now, and I'm gonna torch it, and then I'll mix the other side. I don't need to be in a hurry. I got plenty of working time, but if I chop this and torch it, it's gonna allow this to really start to level out. As I'm chopping, I'm really trying to get things to overlap the edge. I want those drips to run down. That's my reservoir so I could brush those edges out as well. What I've really done here is I broke this up into two pours. I got one pour on this half and then I'm going to mix a little less because I obviously don't need as much on that half. I've, I've done the majority of this top. So I'll mix up a little less and it gave me a gauge where I don't have to be in a rush and do this whole thing at once. That's a pro tip. Only mix what you can work at one time and then mix another batch and continue on with your project. Even if you're doing a color coat, you can follow that same process. If you have a huge bar that runs 15 feet long, only do it in sections. Get that section done and then seam it together with your same techniques. Blow your torch out away from your piece and then torch your bubbles out. Another pro tip guys is when you're torching, hold the base of your torch, lock it open and you can reach really far with that torch and control it. Look at this here where you can see all the sanding scratches and then where the clear goes and how they're perfectly hidden. All right, let's mix up a little more. You can see that this is a little bit more foggy than the clear that I just poured. I entrained a little bit more air. That's okay, when I trowel this out, chop it and torch it, it'll be crystal clear just like the other side. Because of the long open working time, we can use a drill to mix our epoxy. We have enough time to get that air out. That was one of the really key benefits that we were looking for when formulating this product. Long open working time, zero VOC, one to one ratio, you gotta have color capability. It needs to be compatible with all sorts of additives to create these fun reactions. User friendly, this product was designed for the do-it-yourselfer and strong enough for the contractor who does this as a business. Guys, when pushing the epoxy over your edge, just get the leading edge of your trowel to push enough epoxy over to create a nice film. That's gonna give you a beautiful finish and not waste anything. Okay, as a final couple of steps, I'm gonna use my hands and really wipe those edges with my glove, and I'm gonna look for anything that might be embedded in the surface, like a piece of dirt, a piece of dust, a loose bristle. I can use a razor blade or a toothbrush and pull those things right out. I'm really, really pleased with how this looks. I can't believe the depth and the detail, the vein that we put in yesterday. I really like the transitions. This looks like one piece of stone that was morphed together by Mother Nature and created these beautiful looks. My brother and I have installed granite our whole lives and this would be classified super exotic granite. And because of that, it looks extremely expensive. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any value out of this content, hit the like button, stay tuned. We're gonna show you the flyover of how this looks. You can see our next video of how we install this on site in our showroom and how we do a home show display. Visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. And until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you on the next video.
but start where you're comfortable and work your speed up so you don't have to work too long on the project, but if you mess it up, you're working twice as long because you're redoing stuff, right? That's a good fun fact. That's a fun, <laughs> fun fact. <laughs> Hey, we're not supposed to be having fun. What? No fun while you're working. No, solid labor. <laughs> <laughs>